If we say that we have no sin, the truth is not in us, and we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto humankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our, and our mouth, mouth shall, shall show forth thy praise. praise. Glory, Glory to the Father, Father, and to the and Son, to the Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us heartily rejoice in 
Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading is from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the first reading is the prayer of Manasseh. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent. And in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me, in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. 
Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our response to the second reading is the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which hath been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Let us join our voices and proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And thy guidance in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy sake be known among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the Lord be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful people, Grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest and desire that which thou dost promise, so that among the sundry and manifold changes of the world our heart may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, who hast made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and didst send thy blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after thee and find thee. Bring the nations into thy fold. Pour out thy Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of thy kingdom. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Have you ever heard of the Aikido principle? If, you're all ver if you are at all versed in the classical martial arts, you probably have. Most martial arts have their basis in a pretty standard view of combat. There's you, and there's your enemy. Your enemy uses force in one way, you in another. Whichever of you is stronger and faster will prevail. Aikido, however, is distinctive. The principle here is to get a good read on the direction and character of the force being used against you. And then you do a very counterintuitive thing. You don't in any way oppose the force directly. Instead, you sidestep it, but only slightly, engaging your enemy quite closely and gradually and firmly redirect the force until it is doing precisely the opposite of what it was originally intended to do. In other words, rather than directly opposing your enemy's attack, you redirect it so that you can use it as something that works in your favor. 
In Aikido, there are few hits, kicks, and blocks. Rather, practitioners learn to relax into a tense and combative situation instead of tightening up in preparation to oppose it with force. But make no mistake. Aikido isn't passive by any stretch of the imagination. The goal is absolutely to come out on top, and those well-versed in the art can do so consistently. It is simply rooted in the belief that redirecting aggression and violence is far more effective than responding to it with equal and opposite force. So today, we just heard some of Jesus' final words before he enters into the maelstrom that will end with his torture and death. This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. At first, we might find ourselves scratching our heads at Jesus' tone in this dialogue not to mention his tone in nearly all of the Gospel of John. His words sound more like the triumphal declarations of a warrior who knows he has the upper hand in battle, rather than someone headed for the cruel and infamous cross of imperial Rome. This doesn't make sense, right? I mean, by all appearances, the empire is winning. The forces of darkness are winning. How is Jesus' impending crucifixion, the judgment of this world, as opposed to his destruction? The answer to this perplexing question lies in the Aikido principle. Yes, God did send Jesus to earth to confront and ultimately defeat the world's evil. God's mission in coming to earth as a human being was to shed light upon, in other words, judge, earth's evil tendencies, overcome them, and thereby ultimately save the world and its inhabitants from self-destruction. But Jesus knew and knows that the standard principles of combat wouldn't and won't accomplish this lofty goal. He cannot save the perpetrators of evil by destroying them when they come at him with violence. So rather, he gives the appearance of succumbing to them. He lets the imperial machine have its way. But in doing so, he deflates that machine's power completely. See, in killing Jesus, they pave the way for him to rise again, accomplishing something infinitely more powerful than a mortal life alone could have. In torturing and murdering an innocent man, they cast judgment not upon him, but upon themselves. Ultimately, it is the evil machinations of empire that are destroyed in the crucifixion not the Son of Man. He emerges the victor. So this, my friends, is the pattern for our lives as Christians. 
The Christian faith is a religion of peace, but it is definitely not a religion of allowing evil to triumph. This is an incredibly important distinction. It is a way of life that thoroughly follows the Aikido principle. As people who seek to follow the pattern of Jesus, we have a very particular calling. Wherever and whenever we see anything that falls short of the glory for which God created it, whether that's something within ourselves or something on the outside, we take careful note of it. Then we must set as our intention nothing less than the complete eradication of whatever holds us and this world down. But in all of this, we must apply the Aikido principle. The goal is not to destroy anything, not even a speck of dust that God has made. The goal is rather to set the creation free to be the wonderful and awe-inspiring thing it is made to be. This is incredibly important in the areas of life where the battle lines seem to be clearly drawn. In the battle between the sexes, the battle between the races, the battle between religions, the battle between differing political ideologies. The other is not an enemy to be destroyed by force. Even when we're convinced that the other is flat out wrong, this is an occasion for redirection, not destruction. This is how we claim victory the way Jesus claimed and still claims victory as he approached the cross. To put this in a contemporary context, I suggest we have a look at something such as the movement to address climate change. One of the most fascinating figures in this movement is also one of the youngest, the Swede Greta Thunberg. Not even 18 years old, Thunberg has already led thousands of climate strikes and spoken to world leaders, even addressing the United Nations General Assembly. What is most striking is her tone and her technique. She is not militant. She does not lob insults or accusations at her opponents. She does not use the methods of brute force to accomplish her objectives, nor does she encourage anyone else to do so. Rather, she steps into the arena, so to speak, and simply exposes the words and actions all around her for what they really are. She repeats the words spoken by her elders, words that speak of such things as valuing the world's youth and giving them a future filled with hope. She takes those words and asks those who speak them the hard question of how well their actions match what they say. She draws out whatever hypocrisy and hatred may underlie a refusal to make the changes necessary to keep this planet an inhabitable place and just allows that to be seen for what it is. In other words, Greta Thunberg uses the Aikido principle. Whether she calls it this or not, she follows the way of Jesus. She does not launch violence and aggression toward anybody. Rather, she absorbs the violence and aggression that comes toward her, redirecting it such that it is stripped of all disguises and turned back 
against itself. As followers of Christ, we are called to let this sort of thinking and doing be at the root of all of our efforts to overcome evil. We don't confront evil with evil. Rather, we gently but firmly redirect it so that it destroys itself and frees its perpetrators. This is what Jesus did on Calvary's hill, and he invites us to do likewise.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world, saying, O gracious Lord, have mercy upon us. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. Receive these prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. O gracious Lord, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Mark, our bishop, that they may both, of their, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we lift up to you this day the Church of England. In our Episcopal Diocese, we pray for St. Cuthbert's Church in Oakland. In our local community, we pray for the Islamic Center of Livermore. O oh, gracious Lord, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. <clears throat> and to all thy people, Give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word. Truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. In our weekly cycle of prayer, we lift up to you these members of our congregation. We pray for Nikki, Steve and Lanny, and Linda and Andrew, as well as these in military service, for Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, and Taylor. O oh, gracious Lord, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, Bob, our mayor, and all in assemblies or judicial roles at every level of government, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. O oh, gracious Lord, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. O oh, gracious Lord, have, have mercy us. upon us. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Olivia, Becky, Brett M, Carl, Carol, Kathy, Chalopi M, Dave R, David, Dawn, and Wendy, Aaron, Esteban, Miroslava, and Tamara, Glennis, Geraldine, Umberto, Candida, and family, Janice, Jim, and Janet, Josh, Joanne, Liz B, Luke, Marge, and family, Marie R, Mary L, Mary M, Marissa, and family, Monty, and Judy, Nick, Nina, Michael, Sandra, and Henrietta, 
Sarah, Michael E, Sylvia P, Steve W and family and children, Tamara S, the Sweeney, Rudolph and Plemons families, the Herman family, the Purcell family, the Moon family, the Ruzika family, the Boer family, and the Montgomery family. We also pray for the first responders during this past year of COVID and other disasters, for all nurses, doctors, police, firefighters, educators, and especially Brad O and Brad S. We wish healing prayers for all God's children who have gone missing. May you all be rescued and feel God's warm love for you. And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. O oh, gracious Lord, have Our mercy Lord upon Lord. us. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear especially Jennifer R, Sharon H, Linda G, John M, Marie R, Vern P, Joan B, and Elda M, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy servants, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. O gracious Lord, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let's now unite our prayers in the words of the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee the most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.